last week, I sent out an email to everyone that's on our email list. And I had on that uh, two links. One to uh, that guy right there, his, his message from, I don't know, three, four weeks ago, same, whatever. And, uh, and then last week to David Bollard's message. Uh, yeah, and those were, I mean, there was just incredible stuff. Both of them were very rich and both of them are very content laden. And I have a feeling, this is my general judgment, uh, that we have a tendency to just skip rocks across the surface, you know, and, and we don't really go very deep with anything. Uh, we get one little bit of this, one little bit of that, but we don't fully grasp uh, everything. And, and there are things that it's really important that we grasp, that we hold on to. Uh, Don's message uh, was talking about him missing God and God missing him, but he was talking about Paul's message to the church and saying that he had, he had shared with them the full counsel of God's word. And it was kind of on their head now to do either activate it or not activate it, walk in it or not walk in it. And, uh, and you know, if you, if you read Paul much, you'll find out that he repeats himself over and over again in Romans, in Galatians, in Colossians, in Ephesians, in Philippians, First and Second Corinthians. Uh, he continues to preach the same message, and he continues to come against the same enemy. He continues to preach the same message of the gospel, and the gospel of faith, and, and salvation through faith alone, and not works, but uh, through grace. And he continues to come against the enemy of that gospel. And he says that they're all over the place, and they're always sticking up their heads, and they're always speaking, and they're always preaching another gospel. And, uh, but there's no other gospel to be preached than the gospel of faith. And so I think we need to stop every once in a while and take, pay attention not only to, to that message, but to what the Lord is saying to us. Um, so when Don was talking about you know, the, the, the counsel of God's word, he also mentioned this extra biblical kind of thing that goes on, where people believe things that are, are not really founded or grounded in the word of God. And, and what I mean by that, or what, how I would see that, is that when you're reading the word, it's, it's telling a story. And when it's telling a story, there are things that emerge from the word. Uh, they, they come up and they're very obvious and then they, they, they come to the surface and, and those are things we need to be concerned about. Um, and, and we find these other things that are maybe could be, you could use a Bible verse to support them, which we do all the time. We use Bible verses to support all kinds of things that the Bible isn't saying or doesn't say. Um, and we, we just use a phrase. I mean, this book wasn't written with a chapters and verses. And so, so we take a sentence out of a whole narrative and say, this is what God wants for you. Well, you got to read the whole letter, you know, to understand what it means. I uh, have a friend of mine uh, that at one time, point in time, she was uh, a really close friend of mine. And uh, at one point in time, I was talking to her and she goes, you know, I hate you. And, and that was like music to my ears because she wasn't saying she hates me. She was saying I'd gotten through her defenses and penetrated her defenses and she was, have, had affection for me. And that's, I, I know her and I know what she intended, but if you just read that note to me that I hate you, you think, oh my God, you know, it's, it's, it's a big problem, but it's not a big problem. And, and we do that with the word of God and we're very careless with the word of God. And what Paul is saying is we need to be more careful with it. So in, in, in our society, in our time, we have a gazillion voices that we're hearing from. Everyone has a voice. Everyone has a vote. Everyone's taking a poll. I told you that uh, a few weeks ago, I was at a pastor's conference, and there was a friend of mine going, you know, he's kind of complaining about one of the things that was taught. And I, I just said, he's close enough, friend. I said, well, who asked you? Really? I mean... Who asked you? I mean, this, this thing was prepared beforehand with prayer and with forethought, and they presented what they wanted to present to us because they wanted us to think about it. They wanted us to be challenged. They wanted us to wrestle with some things. And so they, they didn't just get up and 
pat us on the head and say, there, there, everything's okay. They shared some things that were provocative, some things that would challenge our way of thinking. And what we needed to do is think about it, not just talk about it, not just react to it, not just raise our hand and say, I'm against that. Well, do you really even know what they said? So we, we've, in a society where everything's very instamatic and, 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 and happens very quickly and we react very quickly and we think everybody... Th- we think everybody cares what we think. And therefore, there's a billion people on Facebook just sharing their opinions, what they think. And, and, and I, you know, I, I continue to hide, 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 hide because I'm not interested in what they think. Um, I'm, I'm interested in them. That's why I'm on Facebook. I'm interested in them. I'm interested in their story. I'm interested in going, what's going on in their life. I could care less about their political views. Uh, I could care less about their uh, whatever, societal views. Um, I don't want to spend my time on, on listening to 50 different voices on 50 different things. I want to listen to this voice, and, and that's why Paul said in, in, in Philippians 3, he said, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me, is not grievous, but for you, it's safe. To hear these same things over and over again is Paul said, it's not grievous to me. It's not pain for me. It's not difficult to me. What it is is safe. It's safe for you to hear these things over and over again. When we were singing those things today that were truth, um, that it just made me feel like that's, that's what we need. We need, to keep, we need to keep hearing that. Uh, to be honest with you, um, this has been a, a rough week for my faith uh, in, in uh, wrestling with some things and some situations and, and uh, you know, some circumstances. And, and so it, it kind of wears you down. It wears you down when, when what God's not doing is the message that you keep hearing. And, and then you start feeling some doubt. You feel like the slope's getting a little bit slippery and you don't feel like you're standing on solid ground. And so to repeat the truth that he never moves, that he never changes, that he's always the same yesterday, today, and forever is so good for my soul, and I'm so strengthened by it. When we were singing that song, I pictured like a house on, on a, like a, like a little island and just it being shaken and there being a storm and blowing everything away, but the rock is still there. It's still there. That doesn't change. That's an eternal truth that doesn't change. And it's one, for whatever reason, I think the Bible proves it, uh, and I think our lifestyle proves it, we need to hear it again and again and again. The truth needs to just keep, keep being put in us and put in us and put in us uh, until it brings forth uh, a harvest, a blessing. So when Don was sharing what he was sharing, the reason I sent that email out is because I want us to hear what he was saying. I want us to hear that there's stuff that's biblical that we need to sit down firmly on, and there's stuff that's not so biblical. And then there's stuff that's way out there. But there's stuff that can sound biblical, but it's not. Uh, the way I put it is like you can, you can share something with me that's true, and I might say that, that's, per, that's true, but I'm not going to put my full weight down on it. Uh, I'm not going to put my full weight on what you're saying because that's, that's, that is true, but it's not, it doesn't emerge from the Scripture. And so I'm not going to sit down on anything that doesn't emerge from the Scripture. For instance, uh, I have a friend who has a son who's a teenager and, of course, rebellious and doing all the things that teenagers can do. Not all do, uh, but they can do. And so he was off into drugs and into other stuff, and, and uh, we, we'd be with him from time to time, and he'd, he'd just not be there. Um, he'd be there, but he'd not be there, you know, and we'd talk to him and wake him up a little bit. And so one day, she just had it. So she went into his bedroom when he wasn't home. Uh, oh, big violation. Um, you violated my trust. Yeah, well, really, you, you've done it in spades. Um, <laughs> when you prove trustworthy, I'll trust you. Uh, that's kind of where I go with that. Uh, so anyway, he, she goes in his room, and she anoints the place in oil. And she anoints his baseball cap with oil. You know, the hats they wear sideways and look like it is. Um, uh, <laughs> you don't, Matt. You look fine today. 
Just, yeah, 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 just uh, there it is right there. Yeah, 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 good. Uh, uh, um, but anyway, the next day, he changed. I mean, changed, and he's been changed now for a well over a year. I mean, he just, he just told her, he came in and said, you know, Mom, I'm going to quit doing drugs and, and other stuff. And, and, uh, and she was telling me, and was very excited, and, and I'm, I was very excited. And, and, but the truth is, she, that is, that is a real experience that she had, and she was uh, goaded or under the unction of the Holy Spirit to do what she did. But she can't develop a cassette set or CD set and teaching and go around and, and start doing it every weekend. You know, church is all around. This is what you do if you have a rebellious teen. You just anoint his cap with oil. And, and it's magic. And, and, you know, we just want too much magic. And there, it's, there isn't any magic. Even with those who it appears that something dramatic and radical and miraculous ha- happened, they still have to live their life. I have several friends, and I also know some others. I know several friends that were delivered instantaneously from alcohol and drugs. Instantaneously. I mean, boom, it's gone. I mean, they don't have any problem with it at all. And, uh, but you know what? They have other problems. They still get divorced. They still have brothers' children. They still have to look at their bank account that's, that's uh, in the red. Uh, there's still challenges that have to be made because this life that we live is a life by faith. We live by from faith to faith. And what I hear too often in us, in me, is that we don't want to live by faith. We want certainty. And, and uh, well, you don't get it. You don't get it with, with this. I, I had a talk with somebody this morning, just wanted certainty about something. And I kept on, I can't give you any certainty. And they, uh, that really bothered them a lot. <laughs> I said, I can't promise you that. I can't promise you what God's not promising. I can't say what God's not saying. Uh, so you have to lean in. You have to trust God. Just like I'm leaning and trusting God for this. Uh, and and what, what amazes me is that uh, we have faith. We have faith. Now listen to this. We have faith for situations that don't exist, but we don't have faith for the ones we're in. I was talking to a gal one time, and she wanted to leave her husband, which she did, um, and because she wanted to have this relationship with another woman. And she felt like it was God. She was very, very convinced that this was the Lord's will for her. And she just shared that with And I said to her, I said, it's amazing to me that you have faith for this relationship that doesn't even really exist yet, yet you don't have faith for the one you're in. So we have faith for a job that we don't have, but we don't have faith for the one we're in. We, don't, we have faith for marriage that we're, we're, we don't have yet, and yet we don't have faith for the one we're in. So there is a reality that we have to activate our faith. We have to walk in faith each day as people of, there you go. And so, uh, so then following up uh, Don's message was, uh, was David Bollard's message last week. Was that amazing or what? I mean, and uh, I chose him to do that message and... Uh, I didn't really. Um, actually, I've, I didn't know how we chose him. Um, normally, when it comes to something important like that, Don and I do rock, papers, and scissors. Um, but uh, uh, which really bothers a lot of people. Um, so, but that time we you, actually we were in a leaders meeting, and Don, Don, this Don right here, felt like the Lord was highlighting David to him. Yeah, like kind of prophetically. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, I won't get into that. Uh, he knows where I'm going. Um, but he, he kind of that night highlighted David and prayed for David. Now, now, he, now that he reminded me. Um, <laughs> You just want full credit. Um, so anyway, he did, and, and really, it was a, a word in season. 
a word in season. What a, what a great word. I mean, the, the, the picture of the children of Israel in the, wandering around for 40 years, struggling, you know, having to depend upon God day, day in and day out for their provision. And, and now that they're ready to cross over into the land of promise, they were, they were totally satisfied with where they were at. They wanted to stay behind in, the, in the, the, the desert. They wanted to stay there and they wanted to live their life there because they'd become familiar, familiar and comfortable. And it was safe now. And so they wanted to stay there. And, and so they actually went to Moses and said, you know, hey, I know that, you know, we were ready to cross over and uh, that's, that's great and, and all that. But if, if you don't mind, we'd just like it right here. We just like to stay where we're at. We don't want to go with our brothers and sisters and fight these battles. We want to stay here where it's safe and secure. And, you know, we can, we can nod our heads and we can agree with that. And we can say, yeah, isn't that, isn't that like bogus of them? Uh, and yet we do it all the time. We do it all the time. We're constantly settling. Um, I wish I, you know, had the resource. I don't know where it is, but I wrote a poem uh, I wrote a poem uh, <laughs> many years ago. It's about 13 pages long. Uh, and it's, I just remember what it, yeah, it's, it's a poem. It's quite a poem. It was a poem that was made into a play. So, so there, I'm, I'm so artistic. Um, uh, it's, it's just amazing and humble and humble. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's crazy. Um, but um, it started with, I'm afraid, Lord, afraid that you don't love me, afraid that you don't care. And it goes on and builds and builds. And, and basically, there's a point in it that, that a light comes. I'm in a prison cell. I'm in this, this cell. And I've become very comfortable there. And yet Jesus comes and, and, and powerfully unlocks the door. And then I'm not... I'm not excited about getting out. I'm fearful how I'm going to stay in. I'm fearful how I'm going to keep that door locked that he's broken the lock to. Get it? And so I was very uncomfortable with that, and I you know, continued to write. I don't know what, what I wrote, but I, I, did, I definitely wrote that I was afraid, and I was afraid of, of moving outside my cell because I'd made a companion of my cell. And we make companions of a lot of things that aren't really companions. They're not things that will, will uh, nurture us. They're not things that will, will uh, fill us up and strengthen us. And, we, we, and, and it's really not that hard to discern. Um, there are relationships that we have that aren't replenishing. They, they just drain you. They take more from you than they ever give and yet we continue in those relationships. We continue to, to participate in relationships that undermine our faith, undermine our personhood, undermine the truth about who we are. And, and yet, we, we sometimes we need to say, no, stop. Stop. I, I'm just, I won't do this any longer. Because you, it's like the, when you're on a plane and the oxygen mats uh, drop, which I hope and pray they never will, because that will be enough to trigger a really bad incident for me. Um, but they say when they fall that you need to help the person next to you, the, the, help yourself, and then help your child. Or in my case, help Don. Um, uh, <laughs> um, because I've always worried about that when we're flying, uh, what's going to happen? So uh, anyway, um, no, we're, you're supposed to help the person after you get your mask on. And somebody asked me, uh, when I, I, years ago, I, I cut off these friends. I actually, actually, I cut them off in a, in a way that I couldn't be with them anymore. Because I was with them, I, I continued to do drugs. I continued to steal and rob and do other things. And so I, I said, I can't be with you any longer. And some, somebody came back to me and said, well, how'd that work? I said, well, it worked fine. It worked great for me. And, uh, and then... I sat at the table at this reunion yesterday with a guy that I used to get in trouble with in junior high school. And uh, so that was 
even before high school. And, uh, and, and it was warm and friendly and engaging. And, you know, we're going to have lunch next week. And, and uh, he, just, he just admires me. He, um, you can tell the way that he just looks at me. Uh, and I look at him, I admire him. He's a f- uh, crazy successful businessman. Um, but he like admires where I am now. And because I made that choice, I made that choice that, okay, if I continue with you guys, I'm going to destroy my life. I'm going to end up dead like a lot of them have, but I can just choose to put my own mask on and, and get, get safe. And then I can, then I'll come back for you. And I have over the years, I've prayed with dozens of these people. Um, but that's, that's what we, they're decisions in life that aren't that complicated. And we make them too complicated. We say, I don't know what to do. Yeah, you do. You just don't want to do it. I don't. I don't. I mean, I don't like to do some of the things that I I have to do uh, because I'm a father. I mean, I have a son who's, who's sideways, you know. He's, uh, and the, the funny thing about it is I, I, I talk to him and I say, man, if you could just use your, ch- if you could monetize your charm, you'd be, you'd be in fat city, you know, uh, because he's so charming. He's, I take him to things and he'll be with all these people who are, are a little bit younger than me, but way, way older than him. And, and I'll just walk away and leave him with them. I mean, he's fine. I said, we want to stick with me. And he goes, no. I'm fine. So he socializes with my friends. He gets along with all of me. He's just wonderful uh, with his people skills. Uh, but he really is hurting on his life skills. And, uh, and he can end up in jail uh, if he continues to listen to his friends uh, and do what they say rather than what the court says. Uh, he can end up in jail. And uh, I can't tell you I cannot tell you what the impulse is. I mean, how strong the impulse is to save him, to keep him from having to face, to having to deal with whatever he's going to deal with in jail. I mean, I want to very badly, but sometimes you just can't. You just can't. Because the best thing that it can do is, is face life on its terms. Because guess what? You get to face life on life's terms, not yours. Not, not your ideas, not your, your, your choices, but what, what life hands you and deals you. Um, I was going to do a message today called What If, and, uh, and I'll just give you a little piece of it. Uh, because years ago, gosh, probably 25 years ago, there was a, a really a strong current of uh, revivalist mentality and praying for revival and, and how the church was going to change in the, in the, in the blink of an eye and, and, and not going to be what it's like today. And so actually we probably don't even need to do what we're doing today because it's going to change so radically and be so different. And, uh, and so one Sunday, I, and this was, this was constantly coming from every quarter. Uh, and so I got up one Sunday and I said, well, what if it doesn't happen? What if it doesn't happen? I said, are we just hosed? Are we just, hosed is a screwed. It's a nicer way of saying screwed because I, won't, I don't want to say screwed in church. So I just say hosed. Um, so now you can translate that. <laughs> Get that done? <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> what was I talking about? <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. I said, well, okay, let's, let's take a look at what we've been left with. If this doesn't happen, if the Big Bang doesn't happen, what do we have? Well, we have Acts chapter 2. We have the Holy Spirit who is empowering his church. I said, two, we've got the Word of God. Three, we've got the fellowship of saints. Four, we've got prayer. All right, so I started to list all the tools, all the things that we're left with if we don't experience the Big Bang. And you know, there's, if you read the Bible, there's people that prayed for the Big Bang and died while they were having faith and prayed for the Big Bang. Hebrews chapter 11. So they died in their hope. They died while they're still hoping. So that could actually happen to us. And so what do we do then? Well, we use what we have. We have, we have the Holy Spirit we have the very presence of God 
uh, on our side with us when, cha- when we face challenges and difficulties. We have the word of God, uh, which is living and, and breathing. I mean, sharper than any two is his sword. I mean, we, we look at the word of God, and I read it, and I read it again, and I'm, how, can, how can this be fresh? How can this be like fresh baked bread 52 years later? But it is, because it's a miracle. The word of God's a miracle. And it speaks life to us. And so we have, if, if we have to wait a while before the big bang happens or the big whatever we want to happen, instantaneous revival happens, we still got a lot. We got a lot that we can do and a lot that we can live in. And, and, and we need to do that while we're waiting for the other. Do I, am I against waiting for the other? No, but if you're, if, if you're distracted so much by dessert, you can't eat dinner, you got a problem. You know, uh, anybody that's ever had a child knows the difference. I mean, I, I was over with Willow, uh, and uh, by the way, Willow has a brother now. Yeah, yeah. The other day, he, he just slept on me, like, for two hours. Didn't, oh, oh, <laughs> heaven. Uh, and so, and then he started to cry, and then I could, I, I could give him to his dad. <laughs> it's a double heaven. It's a double blessing. Um, so, uh, but anyway, Willow, I, I came over and I, I, they don't allow her to have a lot of sugar or anything like that. I mean, so much for, so on her first birthday, she wouldn't eat the cake. I mean, she's like, yeah, get that off of me. But she's not there now. She's repented and changed. <laughs> and, uh. And so I always bring over these little fruit roll-up things, you know, which is the closest thing I can get to her. But I, I gave it to her at the wrong time. And it was like, oh, great. Oh, great. You were just ready to feed her dinner. I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not really. Uh, well, I have to act sorry uh, because I'm <laughs> violating the rules. Um, but, but no, if she eats that, then she won't eat her dinner. And does she need to eat her dinner? Yeah. She does. We have a lot of things that we, we need to do just in everyday life that we need to exercise faith for, for today, for what we're facing today. Um, I have a, a saying that if you want to know God's will for your life, eat what's on your plate. And eat it when it's hot. Because it really tastes lousy when it's cold and moldy. And there's a lot of stuff we just keep putting off and keep putting off. And we keep putting off and keep putting off. And we, we just lose track of who God is. Because if he placed it there, you're going to eat it. You're, you're not going to be able to avoid it. That plate will sit on that table until you eat it. So, so might as well eat it and eat it while it's hot. You know? And even if it doesn't taste good. Because there are things that don't taste good, they're really good for us. I mean, when we, when we talk about God saying yes to all our prayers, um, that's absolutely true. But it doesn't, doesn't mean he says yes the way we want him to. Do you ever see uh, the second, uh, the one about God, uh, Bruce Almighty, where he, he answered everybody's prayers on the lottery. And they all got like $1.50, you know, because he said yes to all of them. And so, you know, none of them really benefit. And so, he, he, yeah, he says yes, but he may not say yes the way that we think he'll say. And I don't know if you've been in the faith long enough, but I have. I am so grateful that he didn't say yes to what I wanted the way I wanted it. Because I'd, I would, I'd talk about hosed. I'd be so hosed right now. And uh, because... If, because I, I think what I feel is what I need. And, and he stands apart from it and goes, yeah, yeah, yes, I know you think that. That's not what I'm going to give you because you'll be, you'll be so messed up if you do. So he, he, he wants to give us, he wants to break us out of our comfort and and zone and, and allow us to step into the promise because we don't step into promise. We, you can't step into promise without faith. You have to exercise faith. And faith is spelled R-I-S-K. 
And so it takes a risk. It takes discomfort. It takes a challenging our, our intuition and our natural intuition. And we have to go against our will to experience his will. And so, that, that, so I, my, my encouragement is both what Don shared is that think, listen to it again, listen to it again. Think about this idea that, that we have been given the whole counsel of God's word. And, and we might want to start there before we pick up all these other teachings that sound good but may not be grounded and rooted in the word. And you make that choice. It's not ours to make. It's yours to make. And secondly, we've been in a desert place. We've been in a difficult place. Well, guess what? He's calling us to a place of promise. And there's no getting there. There's no getting there without faith. Without faith. And and we all, I look in here, this congregation, I I know people, and I know what they're facing in their lives. And I know how warm and friendly it is when we greet greet one another. Uh, You know, everybody gets, it just feels good, doesn't it? And yet you're shaking hands with people and you're hugging people who have trouble and difficulty that is beyond comprehension. I'm telling you the truth when I tell you that. There are problems that people are facing that there aren't any easy answers to. When Don shared last week or whatever, a few weeks ago, that he didn't have all the answers. Well, we don't. We don't. We, I would, I'd like to give them if we had them because we'd look good uh, and we'd feel good about ourselves. But we don't have the answer sometimes. I have a brother-in-law um, who I married to my sister who knows how many years ago because you know, now that I know that my high school reunion was 45 years ago, this could have been any place in time. Um, but I married them a long time ago. And, and she, I, I've, I've always wanted her to be in my church, and she has been from time to time, because she has got the gift of hospitality beyond comprehension, beyond anybody's imagination. She just has it, and she just practices it when she can. Uh, but she's married to a guy who's, who's very uh, introverted and, and reclusive, and as a result, they pulled away from the church. I mean, they... they they do church on television. You don't want to know what I think about that. Um, I just, I don't, I don't think any of us should submit to anybody that we can't know. And so you really can't know the person in, on the TV screen. You can only know them like this. And sometimes it's challenging. Sometimes you go, I wish I didn't know that you thought you were hoes. Uh, but <laughs> that's reality. Um, and uh, so my brother-in-law, he's a wonderful guy and uh, wonderful, wonderful stories of his life. But he has, he's just been diagnosed with uh, mouth, cancer of the mouth. And they have to take out a bunch of the roof of his mouth and they have to reconstruct it. And the, the things he's going to have to go through, um, and of course we're praying for him. Of course everybody's prayed for him. And if, if he doesn't get healed, he's going to face all these things. And you know what? He's going to face him mostly alone. He'll have my sister. You know, my, my bro- other brother-in-law and sister. But, but they've withdrawn from fellowship. And as a result, they've withdrawn from the safety net that God provided for them. I love them. I'll be going back there. I'll be praying for them. I'll, I'll gather people to pray for them. We'll pray for them here. But uh, I know there's a difference between something happening to him in isolation, in something happened to you in fellowship and in relationship. It's just different. It's just the way it works. Uh, and so you, it may not be fair or may not th- seem right, but it's true. If you're connected, you, you just, it's like when you mountain climb. You, you can only fall so far if you go with a t- team because they have uh, attached to them uh, a safety rope. And so if you fall, you may fall like 15 feet, which sounds bad enough to me, but uh, you won't fall 1,000 feet. And so that's what this does for us. It's a safety net for us. And so, so when something like that happens, you don't have to face it alone. You could have hundreds and thousands of people praying for you, and he will because, because I know him and because I'll make his need known to thousands of people. And, uh, but, man, you don't want to take that chance. 
You don't want to take that chance. You want to be connected. And in the way we do that is we live by faith. We walk by faith. We enter into and press into the things of God, whether they're comfortable for us or not. And you know what? That, the chapter ended that David shared, that after they went and fought the battles with their brothers and sisters, they got their land. But they had to go with the, the ones that had to fight and do battle first. And then they got their reward. So... So we got to live by faith. Amen. Amen.